Urinals matter, and public urinals matter, especially. But there's one country in the world that does public urinals like no other, and that country is the Netherlands. Going back centuries, the Dutch have had an intimate relationship with water management. And in cities like Amsterdam, the Dutch had to construct specific forms of water management hardware to withstand drunk British males. Holding all other variables equal, when presented with an open environment and the need to urinate, certain locations have a much higher probability of being chosen. This includes common objects like trees or alleys. But in the Netherlands, there's a unique object that presents a unique danger. On a late night in Amsterdam, a man finds the slow gray running water of the canals a bit too hard to ignore. He walks over, disoriented and unstable, and also a bit too confident. He unzips his fly and releases, only to get lightheaded and stumble and fall into the cold canal below. There's no way back. Cold and increasingly aware of what's happening, the noise of other loud British tourists drown out the sounds of his drowning. Amsterdam's red light district is a notorious tourist attractor. Since alcohol consumption increases the need to urinate and self-confidence, there have been multiple piss-related drownings in the Netherlands. Piss-related drownings are one of the most significant causes of drownings each year, with victims easily being identifiable due to their unzipped flies. Alcohol reduces your blood pressure. Emptying your bladder quickly reduces it even more. Combined both with unstable footing and a wandering drunk tourist has a much higher risk of falling into a canal. Once fallen, they have the added problem that a canal is not easy to climb out of, and being inebriated reduces motor function while making you more likely to swallow dangerous amounts of water. In an attempt to reduce piss-induced drownings, the Dutch have had to come up with a genius solution. This is the Plaskrul, also known as the Piss Curl, a phenomenal example of Dutch urban planning and design. When looking at this map of Amsterdam, you can see that the Plaskrul is strategically built near water and at places with the largest number of British tourists. The highest concentration of krills can be found in the heart of the red light district. And the krill's design is just as impressive as its planning. It's shaped in the form of a golden ratio. Sheets of affordable, long-lasting cast iron metal are bent into a beautiful curve. There's also an open bottom so that it's clear to others whether the krill is in use. And it does it without revealing the self-conscious user. Although the exact secrets behind the Plus Kill's design are lost in time, it's undeniable that the inventors were geniuses. The legs of the Plus Kill are in the shape of a bladder. Amsterdam is an international city, attracting people from multiple different backgrounds and languages. Were the bladder legs designed so as to make it intuitively clear to all that it was built for urination? We'll never know. The Kill is also a lot more welcoming and clearly superior to the hard angle public urinal. The design should obviously be soft and welcoming. No, not hard and cold. The dark green also makes it blend in naturally within the cityscape. Better a urinal that's natural to use than one that brings large amounts of attention to you. The designers also made it so that the plus kill delicately combines both elements of municipal and national branding. On some of the older metal frames, you can find St. Andrew's crosses. This serves a tri-function, advertising the city of Amsterdam, ensuring ventilation, and giving a clear-eyed view of the street to the vulnerable user. Zoom out, and then you begin to see the strong national design elements, combining both the Dutch tiling tradition, as well as bricks likely locally sourced from the Rhine. The Plus Kul is the best Kul, but unfortunately, it goes by another name as well, the Will Be Missed Kill. Currently in existential danger due to Amsterdam's government removing it off of its streets. The Plus Kill isn't perfect, you see. 
De vrouw die twee jaar geleden een boete kreeg voor wildplassen, moet die toch betalen, heeft de rechtbank in Amsterdam beslist. Ruim twee jaar geleden plaste de vrouw na het uitgaan in Amsterdam op straat. Ze kreeg een boete van 140 euro die ze weigerde te betalen. In Amsterdam zijn 35 urinoirs en maar vier openbare toiletten waar ook vrouwen naar de wc kunnen. Volgens de vrouw is er daarom sprake van seksisme. De plasco met zijn perfect ratio's is niet perfect optimized voor space. It also needs to be routinely cleaned by municipal staff due to it not being directly connected to a water system. And this has caused serious issues with more selfish residents who would choose their own hygienic needs over the interests of the larger city whole. Elke dag als om schoonspuiten komt veel viezigheid op zijn dek terecht. Het is gewoon zo, zo smerig. Groene aanslag, dingen bladeren af, ziet wc je daar liggen. Ik bedoel, als ik dit niet schoonmaak, dan wordt het alleen maar erger. Ik zag u net uh, dat u aan het plassen was. Maar de meneer die hier woont, is het niet zo blij mee met die plaskrul hier? Nee, nou, ik begrijp het wel hoor, want uh, ja, er wordt natuurlijk heel veel geplast natuurlijk. En, uh, en er wordt het door de gemeente wordt dan schoongemaakt en met een hele harde spuit. En dan gaat alles pst, in die woonboot. Ja. U dacht niet van, ik pak even de volgende? Nee, jullie zijn wedden. <laughs> ik was nood, <laughs> ik moet plassen. Although there have been some moonshot attempts to introduce handicap and female friendly plaskrulls, the strong cast iron frame was not strong enough to keep the plus krill alive. Instead, in its ashes emerges a new Dutch public urinal, one that puts all others to shame. This is the Eurolift, the quintessential Dutch invention, carrying the Netherlands' strongest national traditions on its cold metal shoulders. The country is known for some of the most intricate and well-developed water management systems in the world, a network of intricate dike and bridge systems that keeps deadly water at bay. Connected into that water system is the AI-powered self-rinsing Eurolift, paying direct homage to the country's strong grip on water. And the Netherlands is also known for its serious investment into world-class public infrastructure. Not everyone uses a public urinal, so why should all be burdened by the urinal use of a few? The Dutch solution, as always, pragmatic and based on consensus. I stem not op a stelling that only is only meant to polarize. Build a urinal that during the day is shy, but pops up at night when the demand is high. Although some of the Eurolift urinals may still be male-centric, it matters less because they're more space-efficient. The single pillar, borrowing more from the oldest French pissoir, is designed to have three urinators simultaneously. And the design also intelligently cuts out of the cylindrical frame to carefully mask out self-conscious urinators. It's exactly the type of brilliant engineering that you would expect from the country home to companies like ASML. The brushed stainless steel frame communicates seriousness and a respect for civilians who need to use the urinal. Stainless steel is also a significant upgrade to the cast iron model because stainless steel is resistant to corrosion. Steel also comes off professional and clean. And the top of the Eurolift, once not in use, is designed to blend in with the natural landscape like a chameleon. But the Eurolift improves upon everything. It has multiple models, so unlike the Plus Krill, some iterations of the Eurolift are unisex and also handicap accessible. Okay, so I know what some of you guys are thinking. How do you model and animate a Dutch public urinal that comes out of the ground? Well, the answer is actually really simple. Blender, and a lot of online videos and courses. If you want to learn how to make a video like this one, right now on Skillshare, there's already hundreds of videos on Blender. In fact, I picked out a few courses that you can follow so you can learn how to make this type of 3D video as well. I also highly recommend checking out Shima Bulgaria's work. This guy is a genius and he just happens to have multiple underrated Skillshare courses explaining his workflow. Also, credit where credit is due, Skillshare is honestly the only reason I can make these videos. More than a year ago, if I hadn't followed Polymatter's courses on thumbnails, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Also, if video editing isn't really your thing, there's of course thousands of other courses, and the best part is that you can try all these videos without paying anything, because the first 1,000 people to use my link in the pinned comment and description will get a one-month free trial.